Read that again. It says, wherefore do what? Gird, gird up the loins of your mind. Amen. It says, wherefore gird up the loins of your mind. Meaning, wherefore prepare and secure your mind and strengthen your mind in order for the things that are to come. And it's let us know here to be sober and hope to the end for the grace that is to be brought unto you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. So today we're going to be talking about where is your mind at? Amen. 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 We're going to focus on our mind and how it relates unto the mind of Christ. Amen. So as we see in the scripture, it is also, it lets us know in the further scriptures, it says, as obedient children, not fashioning yourselves according to the former lust and your ignorance, but as he which have called you is holy, so be ye holy in all manner of conversation. Because it is written, be ye holy, for I am holy. Amen. Amen. And we thank God for just giving us yet a mind to serve. And we thank God for when we were yet in our sins, when we were yet doing everything that wasn't pleasing in God's sight, that God saw fit to work on us, to have patience with us in order that he might draw us unto him. And we look back and we see all the things that we once did that was not according unto God's will is where all our where all the things in our brain functions from is from the mind. And if we look at our mind, we see that our mind is something that is very delicate. And our mind is something that is it says in the word it says a mind is a terrible thing to waste. But we know that our mind is something that is precious to God, something that God can use. It lets us know that let this mind be in you, which is also in Christ Jesus. Let us know that even though Christ has that mind, we have to let that mind that Christ has be within us so that God can use us in whatever way he sees fit. And it says, who hath known the mind of the Lord that he may instruct him? And it says, but we have the mind of Christ. Let us know that we may not know it says, who knows the mind of the Lord? Amen. Let us know that so many people don't know how God thinks. So many people have not been taught, have not been shown the way that God operates. So many people believe Amen. that it is a way that is where you can do anything you want. Our mind, it lets us know that our mind is very deceiving. It is not ours. It is the Lord's. Everything that we have Everything that we are is because of God. Mm -hmm. And when we have the mind to serve him, we can be as obedient children. We can be those that doesn't fashion ourselves according to the former things that we had, the former lust that we once entertained ourselves in, which was according to ignorance. It lets us know that even though our mind is the Lord's, that it is our decision who we choose to let operate our mind. Mm -hmm. Let us know that we can either let God operate our mind or we can either yield unto Satan. Amen. Just let Amen. us know that even though Satan is the prince of this world, that this world does not belong to God. This world belongs to Satan. And Satan knows that if he can get us with his devices, if he can plant thoughts in our mind, if he can deceive us, if he can make us feel like we're nothing, mm -hmm. then he has already won. Amen. He has already gained the victory. And it lets us know that God, God let us know that he already has the victory, that he already defeated death. But it is up to us to choose who are we going to yield to? Are we going to yield our mind unto righteousness? Or are we going to yield our mind unto unrighteousness? And so many people in the world, we thank God that even though we're in the world that we don't have to be of the world because so many people right now are in the world that their, their mind is so messed up. So many people are dealing with so many diseases in their mind. So many people are dealing with things like having bipolar or schizophrenic where, to where they were born with that, to where their mind was already messed up. But we thank God that we are in our right mind that God has allowed us to be, hallelujah, that God has allowed us to be in our right minds. 
that God doesn't, even though we might wander here and there in the world and in the church, but God always knows a way to bring us back unto him. God always has a way that when we've gone far out enough, God always knows a way to gravitate, to pull us back unto him. Amen. And we can think about how when our minds were so messed up, when our hearts were so messed up, when we were so filthy, we might not be able to see how we look. But if we were able to see, hallelujah, if we were able to recognize how we were when we were in that state of sin that we were in, when we were close to drowning, we were close to death. And you think about when someone is dying and you think about how automatically their mind turns to good. Automatically, they believe that if when the doc, if someone tells them you have a few months or a few weeks to live, they automatic, their mind automatically tells them, look, we have to get everything together. We have to get everything situated that we need because we know that they told us that we're only going to be here for a week or they calculate that we're only going to be here for a few days. So their mind tells them, look, you're, you're going to die. So let's just find out, figure out what we can do that is good, that will allow us to find favor in God's sight. That's the only time when we seem to think about God is when we're going through our tough situation and we're faced with all types of trials and tribulations. Amen. But God wants our mind because God knows that our mind is something that is so precious, something that might be delicate, but God knows how to maneuver and how to operate it wow. to allow us to think holy things when we used to think those lustful things, when we used to think about stealing and robbing people wow. and when we used to think about drinking and when we had all types of things on our mind, God knows how to use our mind for his glory. God knows how to do the, do the things that we felt were impossible when we were in the world we felt like Oh, you know, I'm never going to change. So many people in the world right now are going up and about doing things, doing things here and there continually, not having any thought or their conscience. God lets us know that right. our conscience can be seared with a hot iron. Right. But we give all thanks to God, knowing that Jesus. even right. though Great those Lord. things are, those things don't have to be with us. Those things don't have to exist to us if we yield yeah unto God, if we make up our mind to serve God, God lets us know that God, he's waiting for us. He's knocking on the door. Mm -hmm. He, it's, it's, it's amazing to think that even though God owns us, that God will stand there and be so humble, as well as to knock on us on something that he fashioned, that he made himself, that he knows every part of it where he knows what to do, where he knows what not to do. God knows where he would stand there and wait for us to come unto him. Mm -hmm. It takes that, that made up mind that are you going to do the things that you are continually doing, knowing that it leads to death, knowing that it leads to destruction. No. It said that Amen. God knows our heart, God knows our mind. He knows our thoughts before we even think them. God knows everything about us, but do we know everything about ourselves? Do we, do we really know what we can deal with? Do we really know what we want in life? Do we really, are we really able to see what our purpose is? And we can't see the things that God sees, but it takes, a God said that he is a great physician, that he is able to work on us. God spends hours and hours of his time working on you to the point where God will work on you until you're right and God will allow things to happen to you. God will allow situations to come about to test your faith. Amen. And so many people might think of why is God letting this happen? So many people let their mind go so far out to where these things happen to them, where they're contemplating suicide, where they're tired of going through these things each day to the point where they actually commit suicide, to the point where they're actually not pleased with what they're doing. They're cutting themselves or they're trying to hang themselves Amen. or they're, they're trying to find peace 
where peace is not really at. Because when you're in darkness, there is no peace. There's nothing but darkness. You cannot see a light. You cannot, you might. So many people, the devil has us food that we think that even though we're in darkness, we can see, we see a little bit. He gives us a glimpse of a little bit of a light, but he takes it back from us. Let us know that the light is already there, but are you going to walk to it? Amen. Or are you going to stay where you're already at? And God uses us in so many, God uses so many different things, gives us so many different symbolism that are in the Bible to allow us to see that he wants us. As we as we see in the world, they, they made a, uh, a made up person named Uncle Sam that says, I want you, and that is a call for when you're called to war. He's letting you know that he wants you to serve in the army. And Satan, and God knows, Satan knows who God wants and who God has his eyes on. Amen. That's why it says that he uh. goes about as a royal lion seeking whom he may devour, seeking whom he knows that their mind is somewhat there. And if he sees that your mind is somewhat there, but you're not, you're unsure about things. He knows that this is, this is one that I can use. This is one that I can, this is one that I can torture for a little while until they realize that enough is enough. And God wants us to know when will we realize that enough is enough? When will we make up in our mind that God hears all of me? God, I'm tired of doing the things that I'm doing. God, I'm tired of seeing other people saved and not being saved for myself. I'm tired yeah. of going to sleep at night, having those bad dreams, or not being able to go to yeah. sleep at night because you're being tortured by the things that you My did Lord. and you have to do in your past. But we thank God that those that are saved, we thank God that we have a peace of mind. Yes, Lord. That we know that even though those things happen, we know who to go to. God lets us know that we can come boldly before the throne of grace. God lets us know that he is our intercessor, hallelujah, that he is our mediator, that we have a propitiator, that we have an advocate, and an advocate is only someone that fights and defends someone else when they don't have anyone to plead for them. It says that we have an advocate with the Father, and that is Jesus Christ. God lets us know that, if God lets us know that he is our counselor, that he is the Prince of Peace, that he is able to give us life, that he is the way, the truth. But do we really believe that God is who he says he is? Or are we so distracted by the things from our past, by the things that are in the world, by the things that we're doing from day to day, that we have simply forgotten about God, that we have put God aside, and that we have already made up in our mind that this is not what I want, that this is too difficult, that this is too hard to go through. Have you already made up in your mind to serve Satan? And it is, God, let's know that it is not too late. If you have made up your mind that you don't want God, God, let's know that it's not too late to serve him. God, let's know that even though you're serving another master for a while, that there is still a chance for you. And so many people take, hallelujah, so many people take this thing lightly. So many people take salvation lightly to where they'll, they'll sit, they'll come to church, but their heart is not there. Their mind is not there. Their, their body is there, but they themselves are far off. They themselves are thinking about a party that is going on next week or thinking about what they're going to do the next day with their friends or thinking about what they're going to eat tonight or what they're going to watch tonight or who they're going to talk to. But I thank God that Amen. I can I can say that I was one of those people mm -hmm. that was thinking about hallelujah, that I was thinking about all those things. And it took one day for God to give me a wake up call, for God to wake me up and see that look, you're going to die someday. There's going to come a time where you're going to die. And it could be as soon as you don't as, if you don't even know this, it could be as soon as you make it. If you don't think that you're going to die, then we all should know that time here is not going to last forever. No, sir. And I, I, I remember just sitting, hallelujah, I remember just 
sitting in the service and honestly my mind was somewhere my mind was on what I was going to do with my friends the next day or what the girl that I was supposed to meet up with that following day in order to skip school and go meet up with that girl and spend time with her but I thank God that even though God knew my thoughts and God knew what I was thinking God had another path for me God said that broad is the way he said straight is the gate and he said many there be that follow it and he lets us know that there is a way that seemeth right but the end thereof leads to death and we thank God that we know all of these things, hallelujah, that we're taught all of these things because so many people don't have the opportunity to receive the things that we are receiving. So many people have died without even knowing who God was, or so many people have hardened their hearts so much to the point where they don't even want to hear you mention the name of Jesus. Amen. They don't even want to hear if you come up to them with a pamphlet to give them, they won't even accept it. They don't want to have nothing, no dealings to do with God. And it's sad to think that so many people have become this way, that we have fell out of love with Christ, knowing that God has died for us, that God had enough love for a bunch of sinners like us who we weren't even thought of. And we, yet we still have the mind that we won't thank God enough, that we won't give God enough praise. And it says, it, it, it lets us know that, that, we need God. We need the mind of Christ. Because if we think we can make it on our own, we can't. So many, we're, we're, we're just deceiving ourselves. We're just, we're just setting something up in our mind that seems right to us. And that's the way the enemy works. It lets us know that we are, that we that are in Christ, that we that have been baptized, that have received the Holy Ghost, that we're not ignorant unto Satan's devices. But there's so many people out there that have not yet come unto God that are still being used, that are still bound up and entangled up in the yoke of bondage that Satan has them in. Wow. And so many people are in a spiritual prison right now to where whatever Satan tells them they do, whatever, whatever thing their mind tells them to do, they act it out. And God says that there's a type of people that their feet walk towards mischief. And meaning that anything that Seems right to us, we walk right toward it, we navigate toward it, not having any thought about it or any conscience about it. We just follow after it. Exactly. And and God lets us know that Amen. what we what God has to offer is free. Amen. What God has to give us is something that you don't have to work hard for. When you're when you're bound up, when you're entangled up in sin, you have to work in order to get out of it. You have to work in order to free yourself. And it's like it's like a spider. When a spider makes a web, and it's like the spider looks and the spider sees those that that are drawn to that web. And as soon as that spider notices those that are drawn to it, he automatically grabs them, ties them, and tangles them up, keeps them in a in a web that is woven so tightly that it is nearly impossible for them to get out. Amen. And when they when they have sat there in that web for so long to where they can't get out, their, their, their breath leaves them. Their, their sight begins to go dead. Their, all their thoughts begin to diminish. Everything that they have, all their strength is gone because they've been so used to being woven up that they've never conditioned themselves to get out. And it's just like when we're in when we're in a situation, when we're in sin, we 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 that are in sin, that are in the world, we we condition ourselves so far that we 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 feel like we can't break out. We feel like there's no hope for us. We feel like there's nothing that we can do. We feel like God does not hear us because of the things that we do. Um, and so many times we look at people in the world and we begin to judge them. Our mind begins to Instead of reflecting on what, what, what if that was you? We automatically begin to judge and condemn them. We automatically think about, oh, I thank God that that's not me. I thank God that you know I'm not that person. I thank God that I'm not on drugs. But what, but what is really going on in that person's mind? Mm -hmm. What is really going on in that 
crackhead's mind, in that drug dealer's mind, in that drug addict's mind, in that sex addict's mind, in that prostitute's mind. What 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 happens to them when they want when they finally decide that they want to get out? Uh. Well, it's it's like a person that's in a gang, or it's like a person that's being pimped by someone else. What what happens when they decide that they finally decide that they want to get out? If, if, if you're in a gang, you either have to get jumped out, and it's to a point where they where if you've been in there long enough that and you feel like you want to get out. And you've done things that they know that can lead you straight to prison. If you've committed armed robberies, or if you've murdered someone, or if you've been dealing drugs with them, it's harder for you to get out than it is for someone that first came into it, that is first being introduced to it. Amen. It's harder. It's it's even to a point where sometimes you might have to spare, you might have to sacrifice your own life just to get out of that situation. And just like a prostitute, when you think of a, a prostitute, if they decide that they don't want to do that deed anymore, then that that pimp has already made up in his mind, like, look, you have you've gotten me way too much money in order for me to let you go. You've gotten me way too much fame. You're giving me everything that I want, all the materialistic things that I want, you're giving it to me. And why should I let you go? Why should why why should you escape? What what are you gonna offer me in order for your freedom? And if we think of that spiritually, Satan is pimping each and every one of us out. And we're we're his prostitutes, we're his servants, we're we're the ones that he uses in order for us to do his deeds until it is our last day on this earth, until we realize that look, all that I have done was nothing, was meaningless. But then it's too late for you to realize that you need God then because then it's 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 way past your time. Mm -hmm. You're already you're already there. And if we think about demons, if we think about demons, those that serve Satan, those that God has appointed to serve under Satan, demons are someone that have so many different spirits and their mind is so far gone to the point where the only thing they know is sin. The only thing they know is doing something that will cause harm to someone else. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's the only thing they know. That's the only thing they recognize. They recognize sin. They don't, when they see righteousness, they're afraid of it. Mm -hmm. And we have become that same exact way to where we see a Bible. We're afraid to pick up a Bible or we're afraid to come to the light that God has offered us. And it's amazing to how that light is so bright to where it is able to permeate everything. But yet our eyes, that veil that is over us, has yes, kept us so blinded to the point where we don't see nothing. But we, we the only thing we hear is our master's voice. The only thing we hear is our master's voice. To the point where if we if we look back and we see how God operated, God had it to the point where where He put Samson in a predicament where He allowed Samson, a woman, to come and trick Samson in order that she may gain his favor, and in order that she may gain his trust, in order that she may do the things that was appointed of her to do. And it was and as we look and as we see what he went through, they 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 cut his hair, they they burnt his eyes out to where he was so blinded. They they chained him up, they shackled him up, and they kept him there. They made fun of him, they ridiculed him. And we don't realize that spiritually that is what Satan has done unto us. Satan has kept us blinded for so long to where those demons they are not, they don't look at you. They they make fun of you because they know that you know the right thing to do. And Satan always realizes that if he can get someone that is spiritual, then he has got everything that he has, that he wanted. Because he knows that you have a knowledge of God. He knows that you, that you have been taught a little bit of something. That even if he can use someone that knows just a little bit about God. 
That's why we look at all these celebrities and we look at all the materialistic things, but we think about their their life. And so many of them have been raised up in the church. So many of them know the truth, but yet they let the materialistic things yeah. get to them. Wow. They let they let someone whisper in their ear, oh, it doesn't take all that. You know, you have a great voice, you have good talent, you know, we can use you. We can um, you know, we can make you famous. We can um, you know, they 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 switch up the words to where it sounds pleasing to you, to where it makes you want to draw to it. They 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 tell you, they feed you all of this, and yet we listen to their music and we we get into their songs, but yet we we can't even quote a scripture or we can't even memorize a song that is going to be edifying unto God, but yet we can listen to their song and yet we can spiritually worship them and yet we can say, oh, I love this person. I love, oh, that this this person is so um, good with their talents, with what they do, you know, I want to be like this person, but yet we don't want to be like God. Hello. Yet, when it comes to loving God, we, our love is going dimmer and dimmer and, and it's, it, it got to the point where where, where where the apostles in the Bible, they beseech the people. They beseech the people to come unto God. They beseech them to look, draw nigh unto God, and he will draw nigh unto you. They, they God allowed his spirit to dwell within them to speak these things unto them, to speak life unto them. Amen. But yet they preferred the things that were dead. And it said that God is a God of the living. And not the dead. Let right. us know that God doesn't have any dealing with those that are dead. Mm -hmm. But if, if if you're dead and if you have a mind to serve God, if God sees that you you want something better than where you're at, God can use you. Right. And God lets God wants us to know tonight that we it take hallelujah, it takes that made up mind. So many of us, how how many of us have really tasted of God? How many of us have Knowing that God is a mind regulator. Yes, How many of us know that God yes, is a provider? Yes, that God is a protector. Thank you, Lord. That God is a healer. Thank you, that God is a counselor. Yes. That hallelujah, that God is the King of Kings. That God is our source of light. That God is the way. That God is the truth. That God is wonderful. God that is. all the glory belongs to God. That it's not about us. Hallelujah. But it's about God. That it's not about glorifying ourselves, but it's about giving all the glory to the one that actually deserves it. And let us know that he was here before this world even began. And let us know that God was here since the beginning. That Christ was here since the beginning. But God had it set up to where, in a way, he would be spiritually born all over again. That God would take someone that was already here, someone that was already thought of, but was on the back burner of everything. And let us know that he wasn't, he was lower than the angels, but yet he was that word that went forth, that word that created the heaven and the earth, that he was that one that even though he was lower than the angels, he was mightier than them. And it lets us know that so many times we might feel like we're low, we're lower than the ground. But it lets us know that greater is he that is in us. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Greater is he that is in us than he that is in the whole world. Right. And, and, and just that statement alone lets us know that this, that this thing is power, that this thing is authority, that this thing is life by itself. It lets us know that this world does not belong to God. That statement lets us know that this world does not belong to God. It says, greater is he that is in us. Meaning if Christ is in you, then greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Meaning that all the sins, all the things, all the, the Satan, Satan is the prince of the world. Meaning that even though Satan is in the world, we have someone that is greater that is within us. Meaning that we have someone that has defeated that one that everyone is bowing down to, that everyone is worshiping. And we think about all those all those people that have been deceived for so many years, all those people that are in those 
satanic cults, and they are devoted to what they're doing. All those people that are in so many different religions, so many different things, to the point where they don't even recognize who God is anymore. They they pray to someone that is not God. So many they Satan had it set up to a point where God would allow Satan to put thoughts into different people's minds wow. in order that different religions might be brought up in order that Satan can keep those people away from coming unto God, from coming unto this way, because he knows that if you're a Catholic, you believe one thing. If you're a Jew, you believe another thing. If you're a Buddhist, you believe another thing. If you're a Mormon, you believe another thing. And if you're someone that believes in a God, but you don't believe that there is a higher power, or you believe in all types of religions, then Satan knows that you're already drawn up astray from God. You're already someone that has already made up in their mind that this thing that you believe in is right. That this thing that you believe in is true. 